Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at scapular movement and the muscles involved. So in this video, we're only gonna look at muscles that have direct attachments to the scapula. We know there's muscles that attach to the clavicle and the humerus that play an important role for scapular movement, but they're not gonna be the focus today. So what are the muscles we need to look at when it comes to scapular movement, and what are these actual movements? So firstly, we know that we can elevate the scapula, we can depress the scapula, we can protract the scapula, retract the scapula, and we can also have lateral or upward rotation and medial rotation. If we look at this on Frank, elevation, depression, protraction, even though I did this, the pushing forward or boxing, that punch, what happens is that the scapula doesn't move forward. There's a rib cage in the road. So the scapula needs to move around the rib cage. So that's protraction. So protraction is the scapula moving around that rib cage. Retraction is basically bracing the shoulders back. Retraction. Then when we look at lateral rotation or upward rotation, it's like this, opening up or raising the glenohumeral joint and medial rotation, bringing it back down. So what are the muscles involved? Let's start with elevation. So the muscles involved, one is levator scapulae. We've spoken about levator scapulae. It's got its insertion here in the medial border of the scapula and its origins at the first four cervical vertebrae. That contracts, elevates the scapula. Second group is the trapezius. The trapezius we know inserts along the spine of the scapula, but there's upper fibers, horizontal fibers, and lower fibers. Well, it's gonna be obvious. The upper fibers of the trapezius play a role when it comes to elevation. So levator scapulae, upper fibers of the trapezius, elevation. What about depression? So we need to depress the scapula. Well, it's gonna be lower fibers of the trapezius. That's gonna play a role in depression. It's going to be the serratus anterior, the lower fibers of the serratus anterior. Remember the serratus anterior has its origins on the first eight ribs. The lower fibers, when that contracts, it's gonna be depressing the scapula. And in addition to that, the pectoralis minor. Pectoralis minor, we know, is going to be rib three to rib five. That's its origin, has its insertion at the coracoid process. And when that contracts, it's going to bring the scapula down. So that's elevation and depression. What about protraction and retraction? So protraction, bringing that scapula around the rib cage, the prime mover for this is going to be the serratus anterior. So like I said, serratus anterior, origins first eight ribs, attaches to the medial border of the scapula. When it contracts, it brings that scapula through, okay? When it comes to retraction, what we want predominantly are the rhomboids. So you've got rhomboid minor. Rhomboid minor we know has its attachments here. And rhomboid major has its attachments here. They're important when it comes to retraction and also the horizontal and inferior fibers of the trapezius. Now when it comes to lateral rotation, medial rotation, lateral rotation, what's gonna play a role here is the upper fibers of the trapezius and also the serratus anterior. And when it comes to medial rotation, what's gonna play an important role here is gonna be the rhomboids predominantly, but also the pectoralis minor. So when that contracts, that's gonna be pulling this part downwards, which brings this part of the scapula medially. So these are some of the muscles that are attached to the scapula and their role when it comes to scapular movement.